let us study about human digestive system today human digestive system includes the elementary canal and associated digestive glands the elementary canal here you can see the elementary canal which starts with the mouth and ends with an anus in between there is buccal cavity the mouth opens into the mouth cavity that is called buccal cavity and the buccal cavity opens into pharynx the buccal cavity opens into another chamber that chamber is called as pharynx the pharynx opens into esophagus the tube like structure is esophagus the esophagus opens into stomach that sac like structure where hurriedly swallowed food is stored temporarily and partial digestion occurs that place is called stomach that is followed by from this area up to this area you can see small intestine so you can see that that is the small intestine and the remaining part is the large intestine from from this area this total area is the large intestine terminally opens into rectum and finally opens outside by anus so if you see the elementary canal elementary canal also is called gut it begins with mouth ends with anus in between you can see buccal cavity pharynx esophagus stomach and small intestine and large intestine the large intestine terminally opens outside by anus now we will start with the mouth cavity the mouth and mouth cavity now the mouth it is a transverse slit it's a transverse slit it is bordered by two lips now just beneath the nose it is a transverse slit bordered by two lips the superior and inferior lips labium superior oris labium inferior oris i got two lips then the upper lip the lower lip the upper lip is called labium superior oris the lower lip is called labium inferior oris Now the mouth opens into buccal cavity the mouth opens into buccal cavity so roughly that area is the buccal cavity mouth cavity also is called as buccal cavity it is also called oral cavity all same now in between the jaws and the lips in between the lips cheek the lips cheek and the jaw bone inside you can see a small gap the gap is called as vestibule <coughs> that's the area that's the area that's the area in between the lips and cheek on the outer side and the jaw bones inside there is a gap a temporary storage of food you you can see that vestibule now the buccal cavity on one side by lips other side by cheeks 
then on the superior side it is bordered by palate so you can see palate there you can see lips this side and on this side you can see the cheeks so that that's the vague border of the buccal cavity now the buccal cavity superiorly it is separated from nasal cavities see these are nasal cavities the buccal cavity and nasal cavity are separated by hard palate separated by hard palate so this buccal cavity superiorly there are nasal cavities inferiorly there are buccal cavities both these cavities are separated by hard palate you call it as hard palate you you can also call it as secondary palate you can also call it as false palate false palate or pseudo palate all same palate it is a bony partition which separates buccal cavity from nasal cavities the hard palate is made up of maxillae and palatines two bones are involved anterior maxillae posterior palatines um, maybe anteriorly maxillae and that is palatines we are aware this bone is the maxillae and this bone is the mandible so maxillae invasination is the until certain distance followed by palatines now hard palate it has got it has got it, it is not smooth inside it is having a wavy margin internally so that that portion is called as that area is called as that area is called as palatine rugae 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 means folds you can see rugae at several places you can also find rugae in esophagus and stomach as well so this is palatine rugae palatine rugae helps in gripping the food at the at the time of mastication when food is taken into the mouth and when you are trying to chew the food material under that condition so that palatine rugae provides a grip now the buccal cavity posteriorly posteriorly the hard palate will, will continue backwards as soft palate so that is not bordering the buccal cavity okay now this this area the buccal cavity in internally contains the teeth and tongue and of course associated with buccal cavity we have the salivary glands now we have superior labial frenulum a, a flap of connective tissue which is present between the upper lips and uh, somewhere at the middle of the upper jaw so where i am showing that that location that location internally when you lift your uh, lips you can see a thin flap of connective tissue present somewhere at the middle of the center of the jaw to the upper lip so that is that thin flap is called as superior labial frenulum likewise we also have inferior labial frenulum inferior labial frenulum is a flap of connective tissue present between lower jaw and lower lips somewhere at the center of the lower jaw no internally you can see you can see at the center you can see a thin fold vertical fold that is called as inferior labial frenulum right 
Now I am saying the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity on the either side contains cheeks. The cheeks contains in the infants I mean there is Bicat's fat pad. You, you call it as Bicat's fat pad. You can simply call it as sucking pad or you can call it as corpus adiposum bucci. Corpus adiposum bucci. Bucci means buccal cavity. Corpus means body. Adiposum means fat. It's a fat body present inside the inside the cheek. In between the buccinator muscle, master muscle in the cheek, in the infants, no, not in all, in, only in the infants, you can see a, a, a fatty connective tissue and, and it's, it is supporting sucking action for suckling the milk, for sucking the milk, so that, that is used. And gradually after fourth month or sixth month, gradually the big cat's fat pad gradually disappears. Now inside the buccal cavity, there is something called as tongue. Now before that, buccal cavity is useful for ingestion of food. It is useful for appreciation of taste. It is useful for manipulation of food and formation of food bowls. And it is also useful for speech. Along with tongue, it is useful for speech. And the mouth cavity, smiling, other expressions are also possible. So a variety of actions are actually performed by buccal cavity. Now, in the floor of buccal cavity, there is tongue. Tongue is present in the floor of buccal cavity. Now, tongue is a muscular organ. It's, it's a muscular organ present in the floor of buccal cavity. It is around 10 centimeters in length and it contains striped muscles interspersed with fat. Contains striped muscles or voluntary muscles. Along with voluntary muscles, it also contains some fat. Now, if you observe if you observe the tongue, uh, it is having a broad base and pointed apex. That, that's the base of the tongue. That's slightly pointed apex. The tongue is partly protrusible, partly. In some other animals, some animals like chameleon, it is, it is completely protrusible. But in human being, it's only partly protrusible. Now tongue, basic function of the tongue is, it is useful for manipulation of food. That means after the tooth is biting the food into pieces, the salivary gland sports saliva. Now smaller particles, it is mixed with saliva and forms a food bolus. That is possible with the help of tongue. So manipulation of food, the, the solid food mixed with saliva and becoming a food bolus. That's something which is uh, done with the help of tongue. Tongue is also trying to push that food backwards so that the food then, the food bowl is then moved towards the esophagus. The tongue is also appreciating the taste. It has got taste buds to detect the taste. Of course, tongue, with the help of tongue, um, the, the speech is possible. The vocal cords produces that without tongue, the speech is not possible. Now the tongue contains eight muscles. Four intrinsic muscles, 
four extrinsic muscles. Intrinsic muscles. See, all eight muscles are striped muscles. Tongue contains striped muscles. The striped muscles again are two types, intrinsic, extrinsic. Four intrinsic, four extrinsic. Extrinsic muscles, they are attached to tongue and attached to some other bone very close to the tongue. Intrinsic muscles, they are the striped muscles which are not attached to bone. And this is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. Intrinsic muscles, the intrinsic muscles, they change the shape of the tongue. But the extrinsic muscle, the muscles, they change the position of the tongue. So in any case, to change the shape and position, we have got eight sets of uh, striped muscles, intrinsic as well as extrinsic together. Now, at the back of the tongue, you can see a group of lymphoid tissue. The group of lymphoid tissue are called as lingual tonsils. It is called lingual tonsils. Lingual tonsils are a group of lymphoid or tissues present at the base of the tongue. Tonsils, they are also present in the pharynx. When we see the pharynx, we will discuss about that area of tonsils. Wherever tonsils are present, they are a group of lymphoid tissues. They are immunocompetent. They are immune. Their function is immune surveillance. On the surface of the tongue, there are papilla. See, this elevation, this is the surface, this elevation is called papilla. An elevation is called papilla. So, there are different types of papilla. At the base of the tongue, you can see circumvallate papillae. They are called circumvallate papilla. They are almost, they are present at the base of the tongue. See, this is the base of the tongue. So they are present at the base in semicircular fashion, they are present. They are the largest papillary. They are 10 to 14 in number. And they are present at the base in circular fashion. Either side at the base, at the base again, either side of the base, there is foliate papillary. The second type of papilla is the foliate papilla. The foliate papilla are leaf-like. Now, you can see you can see here at the tip and margins you can see fungiform papilla. Fungiform papillae or mushroom-like papillae. That papillae or mushroom-like. They are present at the tip, they are present in the margins. Then, anterior two-thirds. anterior, if I divide this into three parts, the anterior two-third contains foliate papillae. Contains the anterior two-thirds the anterior two-thirds contains filiform papillae. Filiform they are filamentous. They are either conical, they are cylindrical. 
filiform papillae or either conical or cylindrical. Fungiform papillae, they are mushroom like. They are mushroom like papillae. Foliate papillae, these are leaf like. And the circumvallate papillae are circular dome like. The filiform papillae and fungiform papillae are they are numerous papillae. Filiform papillae are the only papillae without taste buds. All other papillae contains taste buds. That means inside the papillae, inside the papillae, inside the papillae. Now this is papilla. So inside the papillae, you can see receptor cells. You can see receptor cell. Receptor cell. A cell with cilia on one side and nerve fiber on the other side. Whenever the cilia moves, the nerve fiber initiates nerve impulses. So that cells are called receptor cells. And here we have chemoreceptors. That means when chemicals enter inside, they can detect the chemicals. They are called chemoreceptors. Of course, there are also other cells um, called supporting cells which are present surrounding and at the center we have chemoreceptor cells with nerve fibers at the bottom. Now that is the structure of a taste bud. There are a, a, around 2000 to 8000 taste buds inside. 2000 to 8000 taste buds are present in the papilla. The taste buds, there are five different types. That means taste buds can differentiate five different types of taste. Uh, the bitter, the sweet, the salty nature, a sour nature, and umami. Umami is uh, the last type. The first four we are already aware. Uh, the salt, the sour taste, uh, the sweet and the bitter we are already. And umami. Umami. Umami is that uh, taste that we can see in fish, shellfish, mushrooms, cabbage, tomatoes, spinach. See a variety of foods it is present. A combination of various taste buds perceive the taste. And the lifespan of the taste buds is around 10 days. That means they are continuously replaced. So they were, they, over a period of time they die, they are replaced by new taste buds.